many standardized exams, reading problems destroy many students, but now it's our turn to destroy them. So how do you excel in any reading comprehension problems? The golden rule is be persistent even to the point of being stubborn on finding only what the question is asking. Beware of familiarity. The test makers often create this trap for multiple choices. Oh, they are very tempting. They change only one or two words. So this is not what the question is asking. You know, many people will just skim through the passage because they want to save time. I'm not saying that skimming is a bad thing. Rather, you should practice skimming for reading problems. However, here's one condition to skimming. You should skim with accuracy. Many trap questions are designed so that they will appeal to your sense of familiarity. Oh, I've seen this phrase here. Hey, I just saw these words in paragraph 2. And then, without validating it, people choose a choice based on being familiar with it. To avoid such a trap, I suggest two things. One, always doubt when you see familiar wording in answer choices. Many correct answers reward not using the same words. Two, always back up your choice by going back to the passage and confirming it. If there is no evidence in the passage, that choice is not correct. Because this channel is about the ACT and the SAT, I will give exams from the ACT. But remember that this method applies to every standardized exam reading section. In this sample ACT reading problem, I will show you how the question is designed to confuse readers with familiarity. The question reads, it can reasonably be inferred from the passage that which of the following is a cherished dream that Apsu expects to make a reality? in his lifetime. So this question and the passage is about Apshu, and option E reads establishing himself financially so as to be able to bring his original family back under one roof. Now somewhere in the second paragraph something similar is there. If you don't double check the source, you will fall into the temptation of choosing this choice just because you've seen it somewhere in the second paragraph. Line 25 to 26 reads Apshu wishes that his own family could have stayed together. But this sentence does not give us information about the main character is wanting to establish himself financially as option it reads. Unless you confirm from the passage that Apsu indeed wanted to establish himself financially, don't choose it as the answer. Rather, you can confirm later on in the passage, specifically in lines 48 to 53, that Apsu tried to be independent and did not want to go back home. This contradicts option E's statement that Apsu wanted to bring the family under one roof because he tried to lessen the financial burden by staying away from home. So option E is only half half right, but we know that half right means first. Be careful of half right truth. Now, option F. Seeing the children at the community center shift their interest from sports to the dramatic arts. This statement can be confirmed in the first sentence of line 1 to 6. Again, this is a trap of familiarity. Oh, I've seen something like this in the first sentence. Nope, the first sentence never mentioned anything about shifting children's interest from sports. It does talk about the dramatic arts because Apsu is dedicated to use his talent as a playwright. But sports? Nope, nada, nothing. Again, this option tempts us with half truth. Eliminate it. Option G, building on the success of the community center by opening other centers like it throughout the state. Now, this option does not have a word by word representation in the passage, but it appears to familiarity as well. I mean, it sounds good, right? Hey, the main character had a noble cause and wanted to help other children. So why not? He might have done a good thing. I'm too late to confirm the fact in the passage. Let's select this option G as I believe in my hunch. Meh. This option is wrong. You should always check for evidence in the passage. Nowhere in the whole passage it doesn't talk about multiple centers. It only mentioned one center that Apsu was involved in. You might say, oh, come on, that's a corny way of creating multiple choices. But hey, you are right, they're corny. It's one of the most common ways of creating incorrect options using different plurality. Every incorrect choice will give you at least two hints for being wrong. First, the plurality of centers is wrong as there is no mention of opening other centers in the passage. And second, the scale of it throughout the states is it's not mentioned in the passage at all. So option G is wrong and we can eliminate it. What about option H? Expanding for some, if not all, of the children the vision they have of themselves and their futures. The verb expanding some of the children's vision does not appear in the passage exactly. We don't see the words expanding and vision. So we should check for a similar word with the same context. Luckily, we can confirm that in the first sentence right away. Clifford Jackson or Apsu, as he preferred to be known in the streets, had committed 
himself with several years ago to use his talent as a playwright to broaden the horizon for the young, gifted, and black, which was how he saw every child milling around that dark street. In this long sentence, we can see that Apsu committed himself to use his dramatic talent to broaden the horizon for the young, gifted, and black. You might say, hey John, but broadening the horizon is not the same as expanding the vision. How are the word vision and horizon the same thing? You may be right. It depends on the context, so we should check that. When you continue reading the passage, you soon find in lines 12 to 15 that Apsu had an intention of broadening the children's horizon if he broadened their horizon. So you can see that the phrase broadening children's horizon was used twice in the passage. Expanding and broadening are two similar words, so there is no doubt about the same context. But what about horizons and vision? If you think about the meaning, vision is related to the ability of seeing the future with creativity, just like Martin Luther King Jr. had. The vision of I have a dream that all men are created equal. Broadening horizons is also related to the ability of seeing something. It's about seeing the mental perception. Hence, both words vision and horizons are used to indicate the context of children's ability to see their potential. And the main character of apps you want to expand broaden that potential ability to see beyond. Okay, maybe you feel overwhelmed and say, hey John, I cannot think of all that in actual exam setting. I agree. It takes time to practice to think logically all the way here. So I would suggest stick to the process of elimination or POE. I already demonstrated to you that previous enter choices were obviously incorrect and we eliminated all choices except H. After the POE, just to double check if option H is suitable for enter and move on. That is another workable process for reading problems. I hope you see the importance of being persistent on finding only what the question is asking. Don't fall into the trap of familiarity by selecting a choice that is off by one or two words. Just be aware that many correct choices are rewarded with the same context. I'm sure your reading section score will improve so much practicing this method. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments and have fun improving the reading section.